In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to you. It is the fifth Sunday in Lent on our pilgrimage to the Holy Week and the celebration of Easter this year. There is more about that on our website, www.gracelutherchurch.com, and there are anniversary dates to save that are listed in your booklet today. Take that on home with you and mark your calendar for that um, busy month of April as we're celebrating our 150th anniversary. Um, and more will be uh, published about all of the services of Holy Week, but you can probably guess we're having service on Palm Sunday, and we're having Monday Thursday at seven, uh, and, or noon and seven, and we're having Good Friday at seven, and seven, and we're having Holy Saturday at six, and we're having church on Easter Sunday at eight o'clock and 10.30 as usual. But I want you all to be encouraged and excited about the celebration of Holy Weekend Easter this year, as always. I want to welcome you to worship today, a Sunday on which we hear Jesus' last public teaching as it's recorded in John's Gospel before the events of the Passion begin, before his farewell to his disciples and all the other events of Holy Week that we remember. Um, we have our grace folk today to sing the psalm in between the readings. The choir has the big anthem, the bell choir is here. Welcome to you all, welcome to visitors, welcome to those on the live stream worshiping together today in the spirit of Jesus. Now let us continue our preparation for worship with our prayer of confession. Please kneel and remain seated as you wish. Let us bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Jesus said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Heavenly Father, we have loved neither you nor our neighbors as ourselves. We turn from our sins to your mercy and grace. We seek refuge in your forgiveness. We seek your spirit of strength. Promise the day we were washed in the saving waters. God, our Father, does not desire the death of sinners, but that we might turn to him and live, believing and trusting that God's steadfast love endures forever. We pray.
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, with steadfast love you draw us to yourself, and in mercy you receive our prayers. Strengthen us to bring forth the fruits of your Spirit, that through life and death we may live in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first lesson. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. A covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the, la from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord.
second lesson. A reading from Hebrews. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son. Today I have begotten you, as he says also in another place. You are a priest forever. According to the order of Mechaziki, I did not pronounce that right, but in the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the ones who was able to save him from death and was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made a perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation of who all obey him. Having been des designated by a, God, by a God, a high priest, according to the order of Mephiziki, the word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and they said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now, my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. And others said an angel has spoken to him. But Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated, and children, you may... Take this time to join your teachers for a fishbowl. And while they're doing it, that, I will remind you that in our prayers, we're giving thanks this weekend for the life and witness of our friend and ecumenical neighbor, John Hampelos, who lived in an apartment above the Sublaki Boys restaurant, Sublaki Boys restaurant, across the street, and worshiped here early church, late church, Sunday school for a number of years before he moved to, the pandemic, uh, to Philadelphia just before the pandemic hit. And he died last week, or at the end of February, really um, suddenly in his apartment of natural causes. His funeral was this Tuesday at the Greek Orthodox Church called Annunciation Church on Hershey Avenue. And it was a joy to bring, be there and bring our greetings to his Greek family and his Greek Christian community there and to be a part of that Thanksgiving for his life and witness. John kept in touch with a number of us with texts and messages all the time and he loved his time and his Lutheran family here at Grace. We also lift up Martha Baranek in our prayers today, who is in the hospital after a second surgery on a badly injured hip. So, Martha, our prayers are with you today as well. Now, grace to you, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. You can get out on a, on a sunny Saturday or Sunday morning, maybe on your way to church. You might have even seen this. Uh, hot air balloon or maybe several big colorful hot air balloons floating gently over the beautiful fields of Lancaster County. It's something they do, I think, over in Lampeter or Strasburg, right? The balloons go up. And sometimes they take off even when it isn't totally clear, maybe in the hopes that the fog will, uh, will burn off by the time 
it's, uh, it's landing time. So there's a story about some people trying to land their hot air balloon on such a day, a foggy day, but the fog wasn't gone. And so they dropped their balloon down low, like we sometimes see them in County Park, coming down in the, in the clouds or in the fog, and you can hear the big propane torch going, trying to keep it in the air, and you hear the voices of people. So these people were trying to land on this foggy day, and they let the balloon sink down low, and they heard the voices down on the ground, and so they hollered out of the balloon, hello down there, can you tell us where we are? And 10 seconds went by, and the balloon drifted away, and 30 seconds went by, and suddenly the faint reply came back, you're in a balloon. <laughs> and so one person in the balloon gondola looks at the other and says, figures we'd get a mathematician, just our luck. How do you know it was a mathematician down there, said the other. Well, he said, the answer took a long time to get. And when it came, it was perfectly, perfectly correct. But it was absolutely useless. <laughs> so today, the Gospel of John tells a story about some Greeks, right, who came to Jerusalem for the Passover festival. And they are, in a way, like the people in the balloon. They are looking, not for a landing place in the fog, but for this person they have heard of. Jesus. They're looking for him in a crowded city. And somehow their search leads them to Philip, Jesus' disciple. He goes and finds Andrew. They go and tell Jesus, presumably, hey, some people are really looking for you. But instead of giving them helpful in information, Jesus gives this mysterious speech, which sounds something like that smart aleck answer that floated up from the fog to the balloon riders. Instead of taking a long time to come, Jesus' answer is rather long and roundabout. It may in some sense, though, be absolutely correct, but its words are deeply mysterious, perhaps too mysterious to be immediately useful. So first we have to be good readers of the Gospel of John, remembering that we've been reading Mark all year and all of a sudden we're in a different place now, here at the end of Lent. What has John brought to the story through this point? Well, just before this moment in Jerusalem, Jesus' public reputation has gotten a huge boost because he has raised his friend Lazarus from the grave. Lazarus had become ill, and Jesus had not been able to return to Bethany to produce a healing prayer for his friend, and so he died and was in the tomb three days. The spectacle and notoriety this sign creates prompts the religious authorities to make their plans to arrest Jesus. We might presume out of fear for the Romans who might, if Jesus gets the crowd stirred up too much, be um, encouraged to, to tamp down any kind of rebellion before it ever happens. And so the leaders are worried for good reason. And then John has told us the story of Mary anointing Jesus with expensive perfume which prompts Jesus to refer to the anointing before his death. And then Jesus, enacting the words of the ancient prophets like Zechariah and the Psalms, which we'll hear next week on Palm Sunday, Jesus has just entered the city of Jerusalem in a, as a kind of public triumph, with lots of people cheering him, welcoming him as the Messiah, perhaps, waving palm branches along the way and shouting Hosanna. And the leaders turn to each other and they say, look, Look, the whole world has gone after him. And just then, the next sentence is, some folks of this world, this whole world, the Gentiles are Greeks, want to see Jesus for themselves. And at this point, the tension has been, been building in John's Gospel, which has started with a very philosophical, theological beginning, a prologue with the proclamation that Jesus is the eternal word of God, the creating word from the beginning. That word made flesh, come to dwell among us, full of grace and truth, about to reveal the glory, the unknown and unknowable mysteries of God to the world. And John's gospel has featured Jesus saying repeatedly, no, it's not time yet, not quite time yet for all that. My hour has not yet come, he says several times. But now the world is coming to him. Now the storm clouds are gathering, and as the conflict between Jesus' teaching and the world's teaching is made clearer, Jesus takes note 
and says, the hour has come. Now it is time for the Son of Man to be glorified. And then he talks in this mysterious way about how God will work through all of this with his little parable about the grain of wheat falling into the earth and dying so that it can bear much fruit. He speaks of the larger purpose of his life in this way, not only of his death, but of his resurrection and ascension. Because the point is not just to somehow pay the debt for our sins by his death, but like a grain of wheat to rise to a new life, to ascend to the right hand of God, and to share this new life in the Spirit. In that new glorified life, Jesus preaches, we too may lose our lives and regain them. Raised up into the new life that seeks God and finds in Jesus a way to follow those ancient laws of Israel, those ancient laws of life, those commandments, but not in fear, instead in hope, not in despair that all is vanity, but in a love for God and one another and in communities in which all God's children have a chance to grow and to flourish, to bear much fruit. But then after this little bit of mysterious preaching, this kind of mysterious and not so useful answer right away to those who are just looking for Jesus, John lets us hear Jesus letting down his guard a little. Now my soul is troubled, he says. In the other three Gospels, we've been reading Mark, but also in Matthew and Luke, the story of this vulnerability is familiar from the Garden of Gethsemane. He goes even further there. Father, let this cup pass from me. In other words, maybe it doesn't have to happen this way. Maybe I don't have to go all the way to the cross. Maybe there's another way for all of your glory to be revealed. In John's telling, though, Jesus seems to have already resolved this matter. He even sounds sarcastic about that fear. My soul is troubled. Now what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No. It is for this reason that I have come to this hour. In this hour is the judgment, he continues. In this hour, the, rulers, the ruler of the world is driven out. Out of where, we might wonder? Out of the city, out of the temple, out of the world, out of our hearts, all of the above, from which will grow a whole new movement of seeking God and living together in peace. They thought they could ward off perhaps further oppression by the Romans, forestall a crisis if they killed Jesus. But they actually set in motion this lifting up of Jesus who continues to draw all people to himself even to this day. The Romans and their empire are long gone. But in every land, this one who was lifted up long ago can still capture our hearts and drive out the one who rules them with selfishness and fear and can raise us up to bear the fruit of love and mercy and peace. That is the gospel for today. And Lent is our season, our time to confess that we often fail to live by this law of love. That is written, as Jeremiah puts it so poetically, written now on our hearts. That we fail to trust his promise sealed by our baptism and shared here at his table. That we so easily open the door of our hearts to the ruler of this world. And so we do confess. And then we pray for the eyes to see him still. And we ask him to take our lives at that beautiful little song poem we just sang for you, sings, and let them be living prayers, despite our struggles. We pray to let them be the glorious harvest, the bearing of much fruit, of the love that God the Father gives through Jesus' life and through ours. Amen.
living, rejoicing in trust and hope, we confess our faith together, saying, I believe in God, God Almighty. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. That those who seek Christ may find him, and in him their salvation and their Lord. Fulfill your promise of drawing all people to yourself, Lord, in your mercy. For the promise of the new covenant made by your prophet Jeremiah, and for the renewal of our hearts by the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy. For your guidance and protection as we walk through the world, where change and turmoil tempt us to forget to trust you and the fruitful harvest you have promised. Help us not to worry so much. Help us to be thankful for the freedom to choose policies and leaders to enact them for the working out of justice and peace in the world, for our daily bread and for the circles of love, family, and friendship in which we still may flourish. Give your people wisdom and courage to discover the many ways to peace. Lord, in your mercy. We pray that you would continue to inspire our congregation to be faithful stewards of all that you have given us. Help us to plant the seeds of our lives the same time and treasures, the ideas and talents that we offer to you so that your work may continue to increase among us. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, grant comfort and healing to all in need. We pray for all who grieve at the death of our brother John Hampelos this week. We pray for Martha Baranek in the hospital and for all others facing surgery or healing from illness or injury whom we we name now before you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear now the prayers of our hearts, O Lord, that we raise to you for any reason. To your hands, gracious Savior, we commend our brother John and all for whom we pray today, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always.
Let us pray. Gracious God, receive our praise and thanksgiving and the offering of our lives that following Jesus on the way of the cross, we may know the joy of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. You bid your people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast. Renew our zeal in faith and life and bring us to the fullness of grace that belongs to the children of God. And so, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy God, Hosanna to you, gracious and merciful Father. We praise and thank you for your love. Into the sorrows and sins of the world you sent your Son, Jesus. He came among us to face temptation, to live among the poor and the oppressed, to call us all to repentance. Facing his own suffering death, he was faithful to you. And so he planted the seed of your kingdom. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his holy offering, we pray for the kingdom's fruitful harvest, both now and at the last day. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Breathe your Holy Spirit upon your people gathered here. Join us with your servants of every time and place who have waited on your mercy and trusted in your promises. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Cleanse us with justice. Comfort us with peace. Fill us with joy. Help us to praise you now and in the glory of your kingdom forever. Amen. Amen. Remember us in your kingdom, O Lord, and teach us all to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, 
I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
God of compassion and love, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Sustain us on our Lenten journey. May our fasting be hunger for justice, our offerings the making of peace, and our prayer the songs of grateful hearts through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. May Christ our Lord grant you grace to grow in holiness, deny yourselves, take up your cross, and follow him. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Amen. So to all of you who are Irish out there today, our apologies that St. Patrick was not featured more uh, prominently in the service, but I want to wish you all a blessed St. Patrick's Day as well. His feast day is today, March 17th. And as you may know, he is a person who left, he just walked away from slavery, went back to go to school in Europe, but then the Holy Spirit pushed him out. He said, go back, go back to where you were enslaved and share the gospel with them. And so in the spirit of St. Patrick, go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.